Good morning. It's morning to me. I'm recording on Tuesday morning. Oh my goodness, what time is it? It is 7.42. Hope that your week has been good. And we are in lesson four, a place to belong. We've been talking about church and diversity within the body today. It's in Ephesians. Oh, Ephesians chapter 2, 19 through 22. The main idea of the lesson today is Jesus is our foundational truth. The truth about Jesus is the foundation upon which we build all other beliefs. Believe that. Um, I chose the study aim to kind of get the lesson going today. What we're trying to do is to understand that we are the living stones that make up the church today. And God uses the mortar of the Holy Spirit to bind us together. Man, I believe that. Um, so, let's move forward. Um, Paul is talking about the church. and What makes up the church? What makes the church so powerful? And um, he's talking to mostly Gentiles here, people who are not Jewish. I want to give you a little bit of background on why this passage is so powerful. Um, you know, God created Israel to be a nation of priests. And he wanted them to share God's love and truth with all the world. And they turned inward. And uh, they made it into a religion that was self-centered. And I think it irked Jesus to see how the Pharisees and the uh, religious people acted. He was disappointed in what uh, Israel had become. Uh, things like um, there was this huge separation between the Gentiles and the Jews. Gentiles couldn't even enter the temple. Uh, the Jews acted like uh, the Gentiles were dirty. And uh, they had to be richly purified to go to the temple after interacting with Gentiles. Um, you know, each synagogue had a purification pool. And um, it's because, you know, if you've been around a Gentile, you're unclean. They're unclean. And, um, you know, the Holy Spirit uh, even had to deal with Peter about things that are unclean. And uh, there was just this big thing about it. Um, we talk a lot about racism today. I guess it's always been prevalent. But the church, the, er the early believers, not the church, but Israel had become racist as to how they de dealt with the uh, Gentiles. And that was not God's will. Still not God's will. And the church was the beginning of the Lord changing that. And Paul is talking to Gentiles and uh, helping them to understand how important that it is for them to be a part of the church. And God is erasing those barriers between people. And um, you know, if the church should be anything, it should be diverse. Okay, I'm not talking about what we believe about the person of Jesus, but I'm talking about the kind of people that are there. We should be welcoming of everyone and allow all kinds of people to be a part of the body. So, um, interesting thing. Now, let me read the passage. We're in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 19 through 22. Consequently, you're no longer foreigners and strangers, no such thing, but fellow citizens with God's people and also members of his household, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. That's a very prominent um, in discussion in the New Testament. Peter talks about Peter being the cornerstone also. In him, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him, you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. Now, you always need to understand the recipients of these letters. These are mostly Gentiles. And so you've got a new Christian church 
that's both Jewish, started out very Jewish. If you look at the church in Jerusalem, the, Jer the church in Antioch of Syria, very Jewish, very prominent Jewish areas. But Paul is bringing the gospel to the Gentiles and becomes the a missionary to the Gentiles, even though there were Jews there, very prominent. So the church has changed from its early days to be both. And it's a beautiful thing. It's a powerful thing. It's part of God's plan. It's part of God's will. Okay. And so I broke this up into four parts and four points. And the first one is verse 19, where he talks about you're more than just citizens. You're part of a family. Uh, you're no longer foreigners and strangers. I mean, yes, you're Gentiles, but you are... Uh, fellow citizens. You have status with God's people and also members of his household, your family. Isn't it interesting how at church uh, we can be a family and it's very strong bonds? We don't live with them every day, praise the Lord, uh, but it's like a family reunion every Sunday. And we're happy to be together and we love one another, even though we're all very different. Um, Paul is saying this, that's kind of a strength. That's God's plan. But we're not just citizens. We're part of, he calls his household. And he means family here. So um, we're part, we're family. Isn't that a powerful thing? With every, uh, just like, the dedication that I have my family at home, I have that same dedication to my family at church. So, good stuff. The second one, he, second point is he taught, he calls Jesus the cornerstone. We're built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets. They're the ones that have shared the message. With Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. We don't use cornerstones very much, maybe decorative, but in their day... A home was built with a, a big, huge stone in the corner or a major building. And everything was measured off of that. That was the beginning stone, uh, the largest stone, and your angles would come off of that. And a lot of the strength of the building came off of that cornerstone. And it's saying that, yes, the message of the apostles has been important to the church, and there's a lot of things that make up the church, but Jesus is the cornerstone. He's the foundation of it all. And we, you don't have a building without him. Uh, you don't have a church without him. So he, um, you know, he's the chief cornerstone. He is the strongest part of the body. Uh, the next point is... Um, we come together to make a church. I think he's talking about the church. He uses the word temple here, but I think he's talking about the church. In him, in Jesus, the whole building is joined together and rises up to become a holy temple in the Lord. This structure rises up. Uh, it has different ingredients, different parts, but he is um, the foundation of it. And it's, it's all joined together uh, to become a temple. Now, I think he's talking about the church. Um, every part is important. Um, it's incomplete without all of the parts. Uh, you need everyone doing their thing and being there and being present and accounted for and, and worshiping together. But he's the most important part. And he's the strongest part of it. Last point is he talks about the Spirit. And in Him, I want to make sure you understand, in Him uh, is a very important phrase. We've seen it twice in the passage today. It's very prominent in um, Ephesians. I don't know what it all means to be in Christ, uh, but I know that it's an important point in Paul's theology and in his thinking. And in Him, you two are being built together Every part's important. They're all different. But we're together, being built together to become a dwelling, the body of Christ, in which God lives by His Spirit. And so 
the the point is, I think, a little bit in that, you know, we know that this body, our physical body, is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Uh, we see that in Corinthians, 2 Corinthians. Um, they were doing terrible things with their body. They were sinful. And Paul's like, don't you know that the temple, your body's the temple of the Holy Spirit. He dwells there. You're exposing him to all these terrible things that you're doing with your body. Um, <laughs> uh, but he said, you know, just as the body is the temple, us being put together as the body of Christ is also the place where the Spirit works. I honestly do believe that the Spirit works in church. I think that every Sunday that we assemble together, the Spirit's doing things. Things he's convicting people, he's speaking to people, he's uh, revealing himself to people. So yes, the spirit's within each individual person that's there, but he's also doing his work when we're assembled together as a family, the church. So good stuff. Uh, let me share a couple things uh, to conclude the lesson, just to kind of bring it all together. Some things to uh, leave you with. First thing is that just like a family, as a church, we should have unity without uniformity. Every person's different. Um, I'm different than every person in my family. They're different than me. Uh, God created us though that way, and that is a strength that is not a weakness. And so as we go to church, we need to remember that people are different. Uh, they're going to think a little bit different about things than we do. So be careful when you drive a stake down and use some difference as a way to divide us. Uh, that's not God's plan. God wants it to be something that strengthens us, not makes us weak. Uh, so keep that in mind next time you're, you're with other believers. Second truth is obviously the church isn't the building it's the people. And we should care more about the people that are the church than we do the building. Yeah, you know, um, <laughs> we got to have a place of worship. We should take care of it. I think sometimes people think that place is like the temple in Jerusalem instead of just a structure to be used for God's people. Um, the building is not holy. The people are. Um, you know, <laughs> next time the youth do something and trash the building, let's cut them a little bit of slack because the youth that are believers are the church, not the building. And so we need to park that in our mind and make that a part of how we treat people at church. Take care of it, you know, but the church is just a building. The building building is a building. Uh, third point, our differences as people actually strengthen the body of Christ, not make it weak. We should strive to be uh, diverse. Um, you know, somebody was asking me about black people at our church. Why aren't there more? We want more. We welcome them. We have some. Uh, but um, we should strive to reach all people, all ethnic groups, not just white Anglos. Um we should welcome everybody, make everybody feel welcome and strive to help them to become um, committed followers of Jesus and 100 percent members of our family. I treat them any different. And so that's a goal. Let's go out and do that. OK, pray with me. Jesus, we love you. We love each other. I thank you that your church is is diverse, but unified. Keep us unified, Lord. I pray that differences among people outside of the body would not come in the front door. Things that divide us everywhere else, I pray, would not divide us at church. Lord, help us keep our eyes on you. We love you. In your name I pray. Amen. You have a great week.